live from his home studio. Please welcome the host of The Core, Jason Rom. Well, hello, everybody. Welcome to my debut episode of The Core. And I am si excited to have everyone here. Um, there's my my makeshift logo. It probably will only last an episode, but, uh, you know, because my, my, uh, my Photoshop skills are not strong. But uh, um, we'll, we'll pop that up there. I'm excited to get into this. And uh, if you have a comment or, or anything, you have any you know, Wireshark stories uh, of your own that you would like to share, drop a comment and we'll, we'll try to get to that before uh, the end of the show. And uh, had a, a note from Josh catching the live show for the first time. Uh, glad uh, that you made it. Hey, Eastern time zone representing. Yeah, I'm in, I'm in the Midwest. I'm in the central time zone here in the United States. And um so we also have a uh, uh, Shondon, if I'm getting that right. Um, welcome. And so, yeah, so let, let's get into this a little bit. And uh, I'm going to kick off today uh, just, you know, foundationally what the core is going to be about is, is breaking down into, into foundational technology. It could be specifically F5. It could be just, just general industry. I come from a networking background and there's a whole host of, of you know, my compatriots in, in the community. Um, so for developers and, and maybe security people who have never seen that technology, you know, come on along for the ride and, and we'll introduce you to, you know, our neck of the woods as, you know, we join some of the other shows where we get to learn and glean from uh, the developer side of the house. And then we maybe we can all meet in the middle and have a, a great uh, picnic and, and help each other out in our understandings. So uh, let's let's go ahead and talk about one of the big like you know, core technology things that happened recently. And that was with uh, what happened with Facebook. And, you know, uh, this write up from thousandeyes.com was was pretty good in their analysis. But I just kind of wanted to talk about, uh, I had a, a light board uh, a while ago on, on BGP. And they call it kind of, you know, BGP DNS are like kind of the duct tape and chewing gum of the internet. And because really DNS is not necessarily a, required service to get packets back and forth, but it's a, you know, human language. It's like, it's a lot easier to remember that I want to go to ESPN.com than it is that uh, I want to go to, you know, a dotted decimal for IPv4 of, you know, whatever that is. Uh, but then, you know, you get IPv6 numbers and you're talking crazy. And, and that's entire, that's, that's really hard to memorize those kinds of things. And so DNS is helpful for that. And so when Facebook's outage started, everybody's like, oh, it's DNS again. And while that was true um, on the surface, it actually wasn't a DNS problem. It was a BGP problem. And that's because of routing. So you can see they're doing the query here. They're getting the name servers for uh, the start of authorities uh, for uh, these name servers. And so, okay, I'm, I'm looking up these name servers and here's the IP addresses for those name servers, but I'm getting no response from them. Um, that's problematic that you're not getting a response from your DNS servers. And so you kind of look at the IPs here uh, of these, you've got uh, 129, 134, and uh, 185, 89. So it looks like you've got two subnets within this larger 185.89, and then two subnets, uh, 30 and 31 within the 129, 134. Uh, so depending on uh, CIDR boundaries with, with routes, you can uh, summarize some routes so that you can keep the, the routing tables smaller. And uh, and they do a good job of, of showing that down here and that you know the um, the two individual DNS routes here at slash 24 summarized as a 23, and then the 30 and 31 summarized as a 23 as well. And then you can see with these routes, they're actually summarized again as a slash 17. So depending on ISP policies, on, on um, route summarization, maybe they only uh, advertise uh, the um, least significant uh, route uh, versus the most significant route. And so they may block those advertisements going outbound. Um, it, it depends on, on the policies, but typically routers will, will honor most specific routes. And so if those are in the system, great, you're good to go. And if they're not, well, that could be problematic. A summary might capture some of that, but maybe, maybe that dies at, at the border of, of, of an ISP exchange. And so those are, uh, things to uh, stay uh, aware of. 
And the interesting thing with this is like fixing a routing table uh, is not hard. It's like, oh, I made a mistake. In fact, uh, way back in my uh, BGP uh, ISP backbone days, I brought Seattle down for an hour and a half. Sorry, Seattle. Um, in fact, that, you know, my headquarters for F5 Seattle. So, um, but yeah, I brought Seattle down for all of the customers of my SP because uh, I deleted a network statement in my BGP uh, configuration. And I thought I was deleting a slash, you know, a, like I think it was a 25 I was trying to get rid of. Maybe it was a 24, but it's actually the whole summary of, of our slash 19 uh, because the network address was the same, but the mask was a little bit different and masks matter. And so that was, uh, that was not good, but you know my outage was an hour and a half. Uh, so again, sorry, Seattle, uh, circa you know nineteen ninety seven, ninety eight, somewhere like that. I still feel bad. It's been twenty something years, and uh, that's probably the biggest mistake I've made. So uh, you know, but you know these things happen. And with with with, with what happened with Facebook is like they didn't just take down their DNS servers. They <laughs> raise your hand if you brought. Yeah, there you go. Uh, if you've brought down an entire city, can we play like tech failure bingo? I think we need to create some bingo cards for that. Um, but uh, yeah, what happened with Facebook is it, it wasn't just that the DNS went down um, and the, the routes, because uh, routes can be repaired. The problem is they they lost the routes to their network management systems. And so they couldn't get in to fix the problem. And uh, And I think I read, I could be wrong about this, but I think I read as well, that even when they got hands and feet to the building to go in and fix the problem manually, they couldn't get in the doors because the access system could also not hit what it needed to hit. And so it was like a comedy of, of errors uh, because of, of one big mess. So uh, Aditya uh, brought down one application. Okay, yeah. So uh, you're gonna need to r raise your game a little bit to, to reach the level of failure uh, that, uh, the, that I hit, so. Um, but, you know, understanding core technology is important. I, I'm not saying Facebook didn't understand their technology. You know, they've got a lot of talented engineers, even understanding mistakes happen. Um, and so, you know, maybe they look at this and say, well, maybe maybe our, uh, you know, our production facing networking assignments and our network management networking assignments, maybe those shouldn't be the same. I don't know. They'll they'll I'm sure be doing root cause um tiger team type response stuff for a while on this. But anyway, let's get on to uh, packet captures and TCP dump. And how I'm going to approach this is we're going to start with a, a look at the, the protocol. So, you know, if you're all familiar with the, um, the OSI model, TCP IP models, you know, you start at the, the physical layer and you climb, you climb the stack, right? You start at the physical layer, then you go to uh, data link and then network and then transport. And uh, is it a uh, uh, session application? I'm, I'm missing one of those. Uh, presentation. There's a presentation in there somewhere for OSI as well. Um, but when you're looking at things like packet captures, you're, you're looking for, you know, all the different uh, encapsulations that may happen along the way and what kind of information you can glean. And if you're a, a security person, and by the way, shout out Cybersecurity Month, uh, when you're a security person, you might take a look at things from a perspective of not how is it intended to work, but how I might I manipulate how it works or how might I uh, try and break things um, that should be working. Uh, because, for example, you might have, uh, you know, your um, a approved, uh, uh, approved flags, uh, so there's reserved here. And so many systems might not do anything with this space in, in the TCP header. And, but what if you put data in there? What, what happens? How do systems respond to that? It, well, well, you know, well-formed systems to the RFCs uh, will, will handle that properly. But even RFCs themselves have challenges in interpretation uh, because they weren't explicit enough in their language. And so different vendors will... Um, you know, interpret those RFCs a little differently. And, you know, I've seen back in my my router days down in, you know, even the Ethernet and IP headers where they interpreted RFCs differently. And so the the hex values in a particular field were were not the same between the vendors. And it took the two vendors working together to decide who was wrong, even though they were both like compliant to the RFC uh, to fix so that they could interact with each other. And so um, anyway, 
you, you kind of climb the stack here. You've got your Ethernet header and all these offsets here. I, I put these in here just so that you can see when we get to TCP dump uh, command in a little bit and then how you might use that in uh, your capture filters uh, to reduce the amount of packets that you actually need to look through when you're doing troubleshooting or uh, you know hunting, uh, how you might use that information. But uh, one thing I find interesting about Ethernet versus uh, versus the IP headers is that the destination address is first followed by the source address with Ethernet, uh, but then with uh, with IP uh, sources uh, first before the destination. So it's interesting how those things uh, get get swapped and who who wrote those RFCs and why weren't they consistent and you know, consistency is something I, I like. I'm not always good at it myself, uh, but when when other people way smarter than me aren't consistent, it's, uh, you know, one of those things that bothers me. Um, but, you know, so so we can look at when we get to Wireshark, all the different uh, filters that you can use in your, either in your capture filters, if you're capturing in Wireshark, which we're not capturing in Wireshark, we're just going to analyze in Wireshark. We're capturing with big IP. Um you can you can use filters for all of these things, and uh, and then you get down to TCP and the TCP header, um, you know, source and destination port. So it's consistent with IP uh, source then destination, and then of course you have the source port then the destination port. You got your sequence numbers and your acknowledgement numbers, and all your flags here in in offset thirteen, and uh, that'll come back uh, when you're when you're wanting to look at like uh, you know how many uh, if you only want to look at sin and push. Uh, packets, then you can use the offset to do that. You don't have to use the offset anymore. They've they've done enough with TCP flags that you can use by name as well. I still remember it from numbers, so I still use those. Uh, but I just wanted to give you an overview of, of kind of looking at the protocol fields. And for binary protocols, it's really important to, to go out and glean that information. I kind of keep uh, paper charts um, in a drawer somewhere when I'm when I'm going through this because you know, some, some things I just do better on paper. And, uh, some of these are, this is one of those things where I'll, I'll print it out and, and just, you know, have it reference on my desk while I'm doing, uh, either if you're using I rules and you're doing binary, uh, formats or decodes or anything like that with traffic as it's coming through with your I rules, all these, uh, protocol analysis, uh, diagrams are really helpful. All right. So, this is the test system that I pulled the, the TCP dump capture from. This is my just virtual big IP here in, uh, you know, in the laptop where we're streaming from. And so we're going to focus in on, you know, traffic to this nerd life SSL VIP. And, uh, you know, we've got a pool back here. Um, incidentally, and in not next month's uh, the core, but two months from now, uh, we're going to we're going to dig into monitors. And so I'll give you a little teaser for that. But I have three members here, and one of those members is down. And the reason it's down is because it's got this reverse flag on this monitor that if it gets a certain, you know, string, it's actually going to knock it down if it gets that string. So anyway, we're we're going to get into monitors later. But uh, you can see in this pool, I actually only have one member alive, and uh, and you'll you'll see that when we get to the to the captures. Uh, but that's the system that we're uh, we're pulling data from. All right, let's talk about packet tracing with TCP dump. TCP dump is a command line utility, and it allows you uh, to grab packet level details on what's going from system to system. Uh, this is actually one of the biggest sellers when back in the day when I was a customer and we were analyzing all the different vendors on on what box we were going to put in our network. Uh, to do our load balancing and our SSL offload and you know all those other services. It was, how can I, assuming everything works, you don't really need it. But if, if you start to have failures, what's the instrumentation on your box to be able to, to handle problems? And the host functionality within Big IP, including TCP dump, was one of those big sellers for us. And so the ability to take a capture and, and it be uh, interface specific. So you can say, okay, I only want to look at the client side of a flow. I want to only look at the server side of a flow. I want to look at both sides. And then I want to look at like the kitchen sink, which is the 0, 0.0. This is capturing, you know, everything minus the uh, the ethernet or, you know, the, the management interface. 
uh, but it, it, everything running on loopbacks in between services from uh, you know uh, through uh, through the proxy, all that it, it's catching all of that traffic, and so that's a that's an important interface. Uh, but you can do it by VLAN, and uh, and then so with TCP dump uh, F5 has customized it quite a bit. Uh, there's some things that you can do, uh, like the uh, pulling the um, uh, the Ethernet, uh, the F5 Ethernet trailer, and I'll show you that in a second. Um, but when I was talking about the flags, where'd that go? Yeah, yeah. So here's by name TCP flags, and if the uh, so you're looking for SIN flags here, you're looking for reset flags. Uh, the other way to do that is just use the the uh, the offset, which is TCP 13, um, and uh, and you'll see that in in my packet capture here in a little bit. But anyway, that's that's TCP be dump just from a, a base. Uh, how about UDP VS? Um, uh, drop another comment there, Aditya. Uh, yes, you can capture UDP traffic as well uh, if you have a, a a virtual server there. I I did not. Uh, I don't have that as far as this talk or whatever. But um, yeah, any, anything flowing through the box, if uh, if it's flowing, you can capture it. And the other thing uh, for and this is uh, I wanted to say two things about this. And by the way, there's lots of information on Ask and in Dev Central. So if you're if you're new uh, to F5 in general and you're here just to talk about Wireshark and packet captures and and capture the flag events or whatever, great, welcome, happy to have you. But uh, tremendous resources on Dev Central. Uh, so make sure you head over to devcentral.f5.com, uh, register. Lots of information there. Ask questions, get involved, and as well as ask.f5.com where uh, these solutions are printed and. And so the ability to set a reset cause in um, in the, the reset flag. So when when you connect to a service and, and you get a reset, you might not know why it's being reset. Uh, however, you can set two database variables, tm.resetcause.log and tm.resetcause.packet. You enable those, and then that's going to return that information in a packet capture. However, caution that's information leakage to outsiders. So it's a, like a troubleshooting thing. You probably don't want to have everybody and anybody getting that information. Uh, but when you're when you're troubleshooting, it can be uh, tremendously useful. You do not need to enable those if you're using the, uh, the F5 Ethernet uh, trailer information at medium or greater because uh, it will log that whether or not you have those um, enabled into your packet capture. So... That is uh, something to keep in mind. And uh, and the other thing about TCP dump uh, that uh, you can do is you can decrypt the captures. You've been able to do this a while if you've got the, uh, you know, your um, key material and in your private key uh, and you can pull that information and, and Wireshark will allow you to upload those keys and then you can decrypt that way. Um, but in 15... Uh, the the F5 SSL flag in 15.0 and forward. If you enable this uh, this uh, this value in the database, um, then you can use the dash dash F5 SSL in your in your TCP dump, and then it'll go ahead and put those client randoms and the key material right into your packet capture, and we'll see that when we get there, um, so that uh, it's a lot easier to uh, to do your decryption and. Uh, T Shark, somebody mentioned T Shark out there. Uh, Josh, there you go. Uh, used once, twice. Haven't learned how to really use it yet. Yeah, in fact, I, I was going to do a little bit of T Shark uh, with this, but I, I couldn't get it working on Mac yet. I've, I've got Wireshark working, but I can't. I can't seem to how to get it installed in a functional way yet. So that's a that's a TBD for me. I know it works well on on the Windows side. Uh, the T Shark does, and I think it it works uh, pretty reliably on uh, Linux as well. Uh, but from a Mac, I haven't gotten it there yet. And uh, so really like the option to tunnel live capture traffic from the big IP to a remote workshop. Yes, you can do that. And we have an article on Dev Central. Uh, it's been a while, so it might need uh, some update work. Um, but you can, um, you know, you can do that. Uh, I would caution if you have very busy systems and, uh, you know, how much traffic you're actually capturing, because that can be, uh, that can be taxing not just on the big IP itself, but but on your your data pipes if they're already kind of full. So yeah, totally possible. Be careful doing that. 
And uh, Josh, you had a question on uh, does the decrap, <laughs> decrap, decrypt flag uh, work with the HSM? Uh, I do not know. That's a good question, and we'll have to look that up because I, I don't know. So I will not say that I do. Um, but anyway, uh, creating your pre-master secrets uh, using T-Shark, you can do that, and then it, it builds a file uh, for you with all the keylog material. I'll show you why that's uh, important here in a second. And then, you know, a lot of other resources. I'll share them with you guys. I want to get on to actually doing some some packet capture stuff with uh, um, with the Wireshark, since that's that's why we're all here. Um, I also in the links uh, in the description, I'm going to share this lightboard I did on uh, taking uh, the key material that we're all going to just put into the Wireshark. But you actually send that off to a system that can do live analysis on stuff that at you know with data at rest is not supposed to be. Uh, or at least it was designed so that you wouldn't have uh, the ability to to do that. Uh, but this, uh, along with an extra so extra hot discovery appliance, allows you to ship off all your key material and be able to do analysis um, after the fact of of uh, you know traffic flows. So, yeah, <laughs> Rodolfo, that's awesome. Yeah, D crap. Yep, totally. That's uh, but that's good for any system really. And then uh, the only other shout out I'll give for the packet tracing, this is a today I learned, is uh, I, I did not know that with the TCP dump, you can attach an APM connectivity profile and a lease pool IP and look at the flows specific to a particular uh, APM connection. Um, so that's that's pretty cool. Uh, so go check that out. I'll, I'll link all that as well. And, and then... Finally, the F5 Ethernet trailer. So built into Wireshark, you used to have to like add this after the fact, and we used to upload this to the code share, and you'd have to merge it in for your version. Uh, it's all included from from uh, Wireshark 2.6 on. Is that the it's it's built in? So all you have to do is is go uh, enable it if it's not enabled already. I think even in one version that it's straight up it enabled uh, from the get go. All right, let's talk about Wireshark and. The way that that uh, capture the flags usually go, and I, I don't have like this big fancy capture the flag platform that we talked about like last Thursday with Secure Code Warrior, where you get this fancy web, then you go in there and you do some things and it awards you points and all that. Capture the flags do have those. Uh, my walkthrough is not that elegant. We're just going to spend some time in Wireshark. And so let me get to my uh, questions here. And the first question I that we're gonna the first task we're gonna do rather is um, is we're gonna take a look at the total ARP requests for 10.0.3.100. So any kind of uh, capture the flag, you're 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 running tasks, and they've set some tasks aside for you. And this one isn't necessarily a uh, security thing. Like we're not gonna go like break into you know Samba um, and steal credentials or anything like that. Um, I'm not sure it's uh, really good for me to teach you all those things uh, on a live stream, but we're just going to go through, you know, the kind of the flow of a capture the flag event. And I think the the intent of those um, is, you know, for the security side is, is to build your security awareness, build your security skills. And as you learn how attacks happen, maybe it helps you to prevent attacks. In talking last uh, last Thursday on our Secure Code Warrior one, that's not necessarily the case. Sometimes it's really easy to identify attacks, really, really hard to fix them. And so, you know, those are two different skill sets, but awareness is the first step, right? And, uh, but in this one, it's like a skill that goes pretty quickly is spending time in, in packet captures and remembering the filters to, to do things quickly. And uh, I had a way back in the day, and this is, this has been probably 20 years now, I had a, um, uh, a class on network instruments observer. It's, it's like a Wireshark. Uh, but it was a paid version of of that. And uh, my teacher in that class, he's like, um, 15 minutes a day, set aside 15 minutes a day and take a pack to capture or something and, and just spend time with it. Uh, because it, like many things in technology, it's use it or lose it. And, and so, uh, let's see. Uh, love the, okay, got it. Thanks, Josh. And thank you. Peter for dropping all the wisdom in uh, the the chats. So, all right, total ARP requests uh, for the um, 
for that address. So, you know, you can just do a general ARP in your packet capture and, and that'll give you all the ARPs. And as you're looking through here, let me, let me pull that off so you can see the bottom of the screen as well. Uh, you can see down here at the bottom that there are 651 packets total. And of the packet capture time that we did, 190 of those packets, 29%, uh, our ARP traffic. And so I don't want to filter through manually to, to try and find this. So we can further, um, we can further reduce this to the address that we wanted. And so now, because I further, uh, narrowed my filter is like the destination that I wanted was this IP address. Well, now that gets me down to the, uh, the number here. So my flag for this, the answer would be five. And that's uh, that's number uh, task number one there, and then so the next one here total ping requests, and that you know we can go to um, you know ICMP right because ICMP is the protocol where pings happen, and again we have uh, we have like fourteen displayed packets here, but the request was for uh, uh, you know ping requests not replies right. And so if you spend enough time in here, you'll learn that uh, type eight is the request, uh, type zero, I think is the response. Yeah. And so uh, the more and more you spend time, the more and more you remember shortcuts and all that. But anyway, uh, good number. Uh, we, we got a response to every one of our pings because there were, um, let's see, uh, four, seven there, seven there. So yeah, ping uh, seven. Uh, anyway, the answer there would be seven. We got seven. And then the last, uh, the next one in this this first initial task is uh, the uh, total MDNS packets with queries for Elgato Key Light Air. So anyway, the lights that you see shining on my face up here, there's a, there's a, I got two Elgato uh, Key Light Airs, one on either side of me. And so if I look at um, the traffic, and it was a little surprising because like my 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 F5 big IP is a virtual system. It's like, well, why is the uh, Elgato Control Center on my laptop sending out multicast requests uh, for uh, the Elgato on into my virtual system, but I guess it's not uh, uh, it's not targeted at all. Uh, Rodolfo has a comment here. Really useful TCP dump option is yep the PNN yes to follow a particular flow. And there is a there is a caveat to that. Like even after you stop that, that that uh, the the P will continue to pull. Um, It'll continue to pull that stuff in. And so, oh, yeah. Um, I'm blocking my face. That's not good, but that's all right. I'll, I'll drop that. You don't need to continue to see my, my task there. Um, but uh, MDNS packets, that's the, uh, you know, Microsoft uh, DNS queries or, or whatever, uh, which is interesting because I, I don't have a Microsoft system here. Uh, so, I but I guess, you know, protocol wins. And so I, I've got that. And one of the things where, where you don't know uh, what you don't know is like, you might see it right away. Um, in fact, you know, I see Elgato, that might be it because I got an ELG. And so boom, I got that there. But if you don't know exactly what you're looking for, you can you know, apply as a filter, the selected. And then you know, that's a DNS flag and that might, that might narrow it down a little bit, but that didn't narrow it down the full way. But I know it, it changed to a DNS flag. And so what I can do here is uh, just change that to DNS query name. And uh, I can change the equals to a contains. And I can do Elgato key light air. And then that gives me the number of requests there and 13 are displayed there. And so anyway, so my flag there in that one would be would be 13. And I cannot believe we're already at 30 minutes. I really thought I was going to fly through this stuff, but I'm going to skip I'm going to skip a little bit just so that we can see some more interesting stuff. And uh, uh, for number 4, task 4 here, what percentages of packets in the capture are handled by TMM0, okay? Well, if we come back and look at the, we included in our capture, the F5 uh, trailer information, um, ETH trailer.tmm, okay? 
And uh, if we take everything that's uh, handled by TMM0, well, I know that I've got 502 of those 651 packets or 77.1% of the packets. And uh, let me come back to comments. I see a bubble up there. Uh, Pico CTF, you're absolutely right, uh, Daniel. I've, I've seen those as well. Um, and Josh talking about VMware uh, being promiscuous. Yep. All right. And so the percentage, uh, our answer to that one would be 77.1. Then we can take a, you know, task B was instead of a percentage, let's take a look at, uh, you know, what TMM1 is doing from a, a number of of uh, packets instead of a percentage. And here we see 148 uh, displayed packets uh, that are matching TMM1. And so you can see TMM1 and TMM0 are actually kind of not handling the same level of traffic. Huh, that's interesting. And and so, you know, maybe we could take a look at that uh, down the road. All right. Let's, uh, let's see. Uh, I'll go a couple more of these and then we'll... Um, and then we'll we'll cut out, and then you know I can post some of this in a, a written article um, on on Thursday. We'll drop. So anything I don't cover here in the show, I'm I'm going to release as a, a an article on Dev Central, so you can go check that out on Thursday when it comes out. But here, okay, what's the what's the TCP dump syntax? Okay, now I'm going to cheat, and I can just go to the very first packet of the capture because anytime you use the the uh, F5 TCP dump. It'll be that first, that first, uh, that first one, and so the the dump capture syntax here, TCP dump dash ni 0.0, .0 uh, saved it to that file, and then dash s zero. Uh, but the other way to get to that information is uh, to use the F5 file info, and and then you can put anything in here. Um, but uh, let's go ahead and just hit version, and so you can see the version that we used here is big IP 15.1.2.1 build uh, 0 .0 0.0.10. Um, and so, and then of course our capture uh, traffic is there. And then is tasks. I got to open another, a different capture real quick for this last one, and then we'll call it good. And then we'll um, get in there. Okay. So, this one's we're gonna how do we decrypt the HTTPS traffic to uh, www.nerdlife.local? And this is where when we talked about when we were going through the uh, the solutions, is that we're we're just gonna pick one of these, and so we want TCP stream equal to one, and we want the F5 TLS keylog information. And we can see there that we have in this extra stuff. Wait. Where's my TLS information? Okay. Let me pull that out. I'll just show you from the key log. Okay. So you can see key material with TLS. Where's my TLS? There we go. Um, we see this key log entry, client random. And to do it manually, you copy the value of this key log, and then you put that in a file you can name the file anything else, but but you know the the guidance is to to do it dot uh, pms. But in order for you to decrypt everything in this, you need to do that for every single client random that's in here. The T shark uh, command that's referenced in one of those links I'll share, uh, it will go through the capture and do all that for you and dump it in a file. And then what you do is you come up here uh, to preferences, and then to protocols. And you scroll down to TLS. A lot of protocols in here. And then you can browse to my.pms, click OK. And then, you know, even the stuff to um, TCP port 
equals 443, you should be able to see uh, your your gets and 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 all that. And uh, when you actually get to traffic, uh, let's see. And yep, there you go. So you have uh, you wouldn't see the HTTP one two hundred OK in this if that was still encrypted. So you you've got your um, uh, and you know your your packet capture is now decrypted. So there's uh, there's more automated ways. If I can't get T Shark working, I'm probably going to uh, just write a, a, a Python script. I think I can use Scappy to pull all that stuff out. And so we'll just go through that. All right. So I'm going to stop on the the packet capture stuff again. I'm going to write all this up so you can come back. Uh, let me check comments real quick before we get out of here. Um, Chris Greer videos, awesome. Thank you, Daniel. And okay. So before we get out of here, um, we have coming up next, uh, actually it's Thursday. So we're, we're here uh, pretty soon. We've got uh, the um, uh, Adam Compton from Trusted Tech. We're going to talk about cybersecurity careers. Uh, we've had a lot of comments here on the, uh, on the show about people asking, how do I break into security? And so he's, he's going to join us. He's a principal uh, security consultant for Trusted Second, so he's going to be awesome. Uh, next Tuesday, back here for Top 5. Uh, it's our debut episode of Top 5. And then uh, next Thursday, not this coming Thursday, but the, the 28th, um, is uh, we're planning on the TLS report. Got a, got a note this morning that that might be changing. So, you know, don't don't hold out for that. We, we might swap that for, with, with another uh, future show. Uh, but as it stands right now, that's that's what the... Um, that's what it, uh, the future holds. And so, and then the other thing that I would say before we get out of here, make sure that if you like this kind of uh, content that you subscribe to our channel, uh, give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down for today's show. And we're going to lead out with a promo for Thursday's show. This week on Dev Central Connects. Always got the cops coming after me. Custom bill hack number 103, my heart. My heart, kickstart my heart. Maybe you're already a bad actor, developer, technician, or maybe you're an accountant. Doesn't matter. There's a place in security for you. Join Jason and John Thursday, October 21st, 1230 Pacific, as they welcome Adam Compton, a principal security consultant with TrustedSec, for a conversation on what it takes to kickstart your heart and get your foot in the cybersecurity door. The link in the description sets your reminder. Dev Central Connects is live every Thursday, 1230 Pacific. Ooh, are you ready to go? Uh, 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 ooh, are you ready now, now, whoa? Yeah, kickstart your heart, give it a shot.